Kamal Kumar, welcome to my series on rational expressions. See how to sketch rational expressions, and then we'll later see some word problems. The question here is to sketch these three graphs. So I have selected the examples so that you get a variety. We'll see about the holes, asymptotes, and at times rational functions may not have any restriction in their domain, right? So those are the things which we'll see while sketching the graphs. First one here is 4x plus 12 over x squared plus x minus 6. So our step will be to factor numerator and denominator. So we get 4 common x plus 3, right? In the denominator, minus 6 means 3 times 2, 3 positive. So we'll say x plus 3 times x minus 2. Now clearly, we could actually cancel out x plus 3. So that should lead to what? That should lead to a whole since we have a common factor, correct? So we could write this as 4 over x minus 2. So what you learn in our second part of the video was about holes and vertical asymptotes. So from here, we do have two restrictions that x is not equal to minus 3 and 2. Now since these cancel away, we can say we have a hole at x equals to which point? Minus 3, correct? So at minus 3, which x it has a hole, what is the y value? If I substitute minus 3 here, I get 4 over minus 3 minus 2, which is minus 4 over 5. Do you see that? So that becomes the position of hole in our graph. Now that is kind of very important to understand. Now let us see how to sketch it. Now I'm not really getting into uh, major details of sketching. There is a lot to be learned uh, from the basics we are talking about. So I'll put here basic. Okay, and I'll provide you with links into the sketching real rational expressions. A lot goes into it, okay? Now let us see now. We have a vertical asymptote, which is at what point? x equals to 2, right? So we have a vertical asymptote uh, at x equals to 2. It means that x equals to 2 is not in our domain, right? So that is our vertical asymptote. So we can also say domain is all real numbers, but not x equals to 2, right? One. Second. At minus 3, we have a hole, right? So at minus 3, there is a hole which is somewhere here, uh, minus 4 over 5. So somewhere here, we have a hole here, right? So that means this point is also not in our domain, correct? Okay? Now to sketch this particular function, what we could do, uh, some simple calculations, right? There's a lot, as I said about it, we could calculate the value, where, what is the x when x is 0, that is y-intercept we could calculate. So if I put x equals to 0, I get a value which is y equals to uh, 4 over minus 2, which is uh, minus 2. Is it okay? So at x equals to 0, we have a value which is minus 2, which is going to be somewhere here. Now based on this calculation, we'll, we get a graph which will be kind of like this. On the other side, you could take some more values and then what you find is that the curve will be kind of like this. This value we just calculated to be minus 2. And this value here is what? This is at minus 3. The value of our rational expression is minus 4 over 5. And that is how you represent a whole, right? So, so the idea here is to show you how to represent a whole and how to represent a vertical asymptote. In this case, equation of the vertical asymptote is x equals to 2. Does make sense to you. So this is our y-axis, this is the x-axis, and that is how we could actually sketch the given function. To get more points and accuracy, plug in the values of x as 3, 4, right, and some of the values and get your curve. It should look like this. Does make sense to you, right? So we'll just uh, give that much to our sketches and I hope this is good enough at this particular stage, right? Now, 
Next one here is 4 over x square plus 1. This is already a simplified version, right? Do we have any restriction here? No. So we have no restrictions. Here, x belongs to real numbers, and that is the domain. Do you understand? In this particular case. So let me just... Uh, make a boundary here. These are very, very important examples. So in such a case, what you really uh, could do is we will sketch it using a different technique. We'll say, well, let me first uh, do the first part of sketching x square plus 1. Right? So, so we could do x square plus 1, which will be graph like this. And uh, let's say, let's say, let's say like this. Now we do 1 over or 4 over. So, so 4 over will be this point here is 1. When I multiply by 4, it becomes 4, right? And so when I do 1 over, you know, when you're dividing by a large number, then 1 over large number is very small. So the graph which you actually get in this particular case will be kind of like this. Very interesting, right? Now, as you can clearly see here, the the value of 4 will be the maximum value. So when I substitute x as 0, I get 4, and that is my y-intercept. But when the x value is very large, we say when x is approaching positive or negative infinity, y is approaching 0 from the positive side. So that is at the later stage, we'll get into these details also. But from here, you can see that when x is very large, then 4 divided by a large number, which is always positive in this case, will be approaching 0 from above. Right? So that is how we sometimes say, and this is actually called horizontal asymptote. To know more about horizontal asymptotes, you can look into my videos, type in Anil Kumar Horizontal Asymptotes Playlist to see many videos on this, right? Now let's uh, move on and take the last example. But this was a very critical example where I've shown you uh, that without restriction, we could have rational expressions. And it was a part of your question earlier. Okay. The last one here, I think you should try on your own. Here is a quick solution to the same. 3 is a common factor, so we get x squared minus um, 9, which is a difference of square, x plus 3. And so we get 3 times x plus 3 times x minus 3 over x plus 3. So in this case, we have both whole and no vertical asymptote. It's a straight line. Do you see that? Oh, that's good. So what we have here is that we have a hole in this case, and hole is at x equals to minus 3. So when I put minus 3 in my expression, I get what? 3 times minus 3 minus 3 is minus 6, and minus 6 times 3 is minus 18. Right? So, so that's what I get at x equals to minus 3. Correct? So let me rewrite... Uh, this particular expression here as 3 over x minus 3 okay so it just looks like a linear expression now the question for you also here is is this equal to that no you have to write the restriction which is x cannot be equal to minus 3 we have a hole at minus 3 right so here x is not equal to minus 3 is your restriction is that clear Let's try to sketch this graph. Okay, So it is like a straight line. You can see 3x minus 9, right? So 3x minus 9 is your line. But at minus 3, uh, it, is, it has a restriction. So let me extend this. Okay. So basically, we're trying to sketch the function, which is, let me write like this, 3x minus 9, okay? Where where x is not equal to minus 3, since we have a hole there, right? That's what it is. Okay. So at minus 9, we have a... Uh, so, so we'll do like this. 
So we have a y intercept at minus 9. So we'll go like this. I think I have enough space here. So I'll make up that hole, right? And then I'll continue and sketch the line. Now that is how this graph is going to look. Now this particular point here represents the hole. And the coordinates for the hole are as calculated minus 3 minus 18, which you could calculate from the final expression, right? This is your final expression. The y-intercept is minus 9. Perfect. So that is your sketch for the given function. Is that clear to you? So it actually gives you a fairly good idea about sketching rational expressions. There are only very few videos which could beat this part of complexity, right? With simple examples, I could give you all the flavor of uh, rational expressions and how they could be sketched. Question number seven, here is write restrictions and sketch graph of 3x squared minus 27 plus three. Oh, I gave you the same example. Oh my God. Okay, so we'll just change this. We'll just change this, okay? So we'll make it a, what should I do? Okay. So we'll change this and we'll make this as a cube. Okay. So we'll make it a cube. That should be very interesting. So I've changed the question. It is x cubed plus 27 over x plus 3 for you. Now that's a difficult question. Now what is a cube plus b cube? Let me give you this uh, expansion also. a cube plus b cube is a plus b times a square minus a b plus b square that should help okay so new question for you x cube plus 27 over x plus 3 and that is the expansion for the numerator so you could factor and then get your graph okay so i think that should be very interesting feel free to write your comments share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos that would be great thanks for watching and all the best